Welcome to the Retreat Leaders Podcast, your sanctuary with retreat experts, where we spill the tea on retreat success. Here we dive into crafting transformational guest experiences, talk about how to avoid pitfalls, and unlock marketing secrets. Whether you're a seasoned guru or a budding enthusiast, we've got the inside scoop for you. Join us as we learn how to flourish in this magical world of retreats. Welcome to the Retreat Leaders Podcast. This is Shannon, and I am so excited about our guest that we have today because this is probably one of the number one requested things as far as teach me how to do it. And so we are going to tackle social media marketing, but welcome to the show, Emma. How are you? I am so great. Thank you so much for having me. I cannot wait to dive into everything social today. Yay. Oh, first, just start off by telling everyone who you are, like, what do you do? How did you get to where you are today? All the fun stuff. Yeah. So my name is Emma Tesler. I'm the founder of 95 Media. We are a female-owned and operated digital marketing agency really specializing in creating high converting content. We do this through three different verticals, which are social media, email, and podcasting to really tackle you know, your marketing as a holistic body and an element of your business. We know that in today's world, you cannot have a business if you are not marketing it. It is the way that you get in front of your audience. And it's just been a really, really wonderful experience to have, to be able to support other brands like this, because the impact that our work is able to make on other businesses is just wild. And I'm so honored to do this work in the marketing space. But I started doing social media marketing nine years ago now, which is insane. So back in 2015, I was actually in a completely different career field. You know, I thought I was going to go down a very different direction. But when I found social media marketing, my eyes were just open to it. And I looked around and I was like, why are other people not seeing what I'm seeing? Like, this is the beginning, the tip of the iceberg here. There is so much that's about to happen. And I want to ride that wave. And I want to be a part of this because I I can just see what's about to happen. And no one else can see it right now, which is crazy to me. And so it's just been, it's been a wild journey. It's been so cool to get here. But yeah, I mean, really the work that we do is focus on social media and bringing in new business from the content that you put out there. So you're not just feeling like you're posting every day, just hoping for the best, but you know that your content's actually working for you. Hell yes. Hallelujah. That is exactly, I think, what all of us business owners, and I'm sure including yourself because you work on your own business, is are we getting good content in the right places talking to the right people? And I think that that can feel like a rabbit hole for those in the business world today that are either just starting with social media or just really haven't tapped into what it can do for you. I mentioned to Emma right before we started recording that when I first started doing retreats was when Facebook Look at there was not even Instagram. Okay, Instagram wasn't even a thing yet. It was just Facebook. And it was so easy. It was simple. But that's also because there was like a fraction of the users on it. And it had the fraction of the capabilities that it has today. And so seeing it develop and change and you being in that industry for nine years, I'm sure you've seen really crazy changes in the last nine years craziness. I mean, it is a completely different landscape. The platforms are so different. And that's the thing, though, is a lot of times we get stuck in doing our marketing in the way that we used to. And that's something to be super aware of because because those platforms change so much, it's more important than ever that you are also shifting with those changes. Hey, retreat leaders. Are your retreats the hidden gems of the travel world just waiting to be discovered? Well, it's time to shine a spotlight on them, introducing the ultimate guide you've been waiting for, our free guide, top 11 tips for building an email list for you, the retreat leaders. Imagine an email list packed with eager attendees hanging on to your every word and ready to book at the click of a button. We share the blueprint to creating a list that sells. Don't miss out on the action. Learn how to connect deeply with your audience boost your bookings, and create a buzz that fills every retreat. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, these 11 tips are your secret weapon to success. Visit retreatleaderlistbuilding.com now to grab your free copy and start building an email list that sells out your retreats. 
One of the things that I love that you said is that you don't just, as far as your business, you don't just help people with social media, that you help them with content and email marketing. And here's why for me, and then we can have, I'm happy to have us like a debate if we need to, but conversation about the fact that building your email list with social media is like, to me, it's almost like that's the top priority is building that list, using social media and content marketing in order to do that, because that's the only thing you'll own. What are your thoughts on that? Couldn't agree more. 100% on the same page. I always say, you know, our goal, and when you hire 95 Media, you hire us because you want to grow your social media presence. You want to make more sales from social media. And my goal is to get in there and do that, but ultimately get your audience the heck off of social media. As you said, you do not own your social media audience. The only list that you own is your email list. And even if you aren't seeing sales from your email list right now, you still want to get people over to your email list. When it comes to your emails, you control the visibility that your emails have. There is no algorithm between you and the people reading your emails. And you get to deliver things straight to their inbox. If they don't want that content, you're not bothering them. They can unsubscribe. Like we don't need to worry about feeling salesy here. But really, when it comes to your social media content, only 2% of your audience is even seeing the content you're putting out there. So let's remember that versus your emails, which are always going to land in their inbox. Okay, so super funny. I just recorded today. I'm calling it a little mini espresso shot. So by the time y'all are listening to this with Emma, you would have possibly already heard my little espresso shot where I just did a quick, literally like five minute thing about how email list is king. And I said on that thing that, you know, will be released September 19th, I think, whatever we are today, but it will be released and it's literally 2% is seeing your content. And when you pay for it, it might go obviously bump up a little bit, but just your organic reach is 2% of your audience. And I'm sure, Emma, you have seen some people with big followings lose all their shit. And for no reason at all, sometimes it just happens. Yeah, all the time. You know, you have no control. You're going to get very little customer support. So you could put all this time, money, effort into creating your social platform. And don't get me wrong, I think that you should, but I really do think that you should be thinking bigger than just your social media presence because that could be gone tomorrow. A new platform could pop up and everyone go there. And then everything you've put into the one you've been working on right now isn't really for anything anymore. So absolutely think bigger than just your social, but utilize it as a tool to grow your brand in other ways. Love it. Love it. Okay. So if I talk to me like I'm a kindergartner and I I haven't yet come to you for help because I think that that's what we all should be doing. But if I'm trying to do some of this on my own, what are some just suggestions and tips that you can give me to maximize my time in social media? My number one tip would be to create and utilize video more than you want to. And I am always the bearer of bad news when I say that because no one wants to hear that. No one enjoys being on video. However, it is so crucial to use video content in your marketing. The reason that it's so important is because video is favored by every single algorithm on every single app that you're using. I don't care if you're on LinkedIn and you're like, am I literally never seen anybody post video on LinkedIn? Well, that's the reason you should be because if other people aren't, then that means that there's more white space for you to fill and do it yourself. So there's no excuse. We know that video is number one and super important. There's so many ways to do video though. There is, you know, being on your Instagram stories, there's going live, there's posting a real YouTube short, TikTok. But what we know about video is that it's the best way to connect with your audience. You can create Canva graphics until you're blue in the face, and it is not going to make as much impact as you getting on video. So if you're not doing that already, or even if you've just like dipped your toes in, I'd really encourage you to just push yourself on that because you're going to see a much faster ROI from those video posts than you are anything else. I totally agree. And if you think about even your own like scrolling, right? Think about our our own scrolling activities. How often do we just fly past an image versus we actually might pause and we may or may not finish it, but we're going to pause a slightly longer on the videos and spend more time there. And that might pique our interest to go further into that particular whoever it is that we're watching the video, we might go further into their channel or their, you know, their particular profile and dig deeper because of the video versus any image that somebody is going to share. So I cannot agree more. 
Yeah, video is really like a teaser and it, it gets people interested because really we're all looking for human connection at the end of the day. You know, we shifted so much from in person to virtual when the pandemic hit. And now we're coming out that on the other side four or five years later and being like, I need people. Like I need other people around me. And the easiest way to do that right now is through video content on social, you know, even just understanding how someone uses their hands in videos or moves their facial expressions. Like these are all things that subliminally our consumer is utilizing as connection points with us. And when we can build upon that, you're going to see a shortened buyer experience and a faster conversion. Oh, love this. Love this. Hey, it's Shannon here. I'm just popping in really quickly to ask a big favor. Would you pause the show and go review it for us? Please. Reviews really help us to be able to get more guests and more experts on the show to help you transform your retreats. So if you wouldn't mind pausing and leaving us a review, that would mean everything. And if you're not already subscribed, do that too. Okay. Do you have any other like short little tips that you can give our audience? Yeah. So another one I would say is Instagram stories are really underrated. You know, I would say 99% of brands have Instagram at this point. And if you don't, you absolutely should. It is really like the foundational platform right now for every single brand. Like, should you be on other ones? Yes. But do you need Instagram? Absolutely. And if you have Instagram, Instagram stories are a really easy, high touch experience for your audience. Now, everyone uses Instagram differently. Some people go onto Instagram and they just scroll their home feed and they just consume what's, you know, posted to someone else's feed. But if that's how you consume, that doesn't mean that's how your audience consumes. For me, for example, and most of the people on my team, we actually go to Instagram and only consume stories. Like I rarely even scroll through Instagram. I'm just watching stories. So Keep in mind, the way that you consume is not the way that necessarily your audience consumes. And the reason that Instagram stories are so powerful and so intriguing to a lot of consumers is because the content is temporary. It's 24-hour cycles. You have to show things that are kind of happening right now. And more than anything, it shows a behind-the-scenes glimpse into who you are and what your business does. We're all nosy. We all want to know what's going on. Like, I want to see what you're eating for lunch. You might think that's the most boring thing in the entire world. But what that does for me is make me feel more connected to you. So take people along on the journey, you know, show them what it looks like to plan a retreat. What does it look like to do different elements of that retreat planning? You know, where are you on that journey? I read Gary Vaynerchuk's book, Crushing It, in like 2018, and it or 27, like right when it came out. And there was one part of that book that really stuck with me. Again, very early stages of social media marketing. But he was talking about how a lot of the people he was featuring in the book at the time had already built their brands, right? Like they had already, they were well-known. They had big businesses. And he made a comment that said, you know, would it have been so cool if these founders actually were able to take you along on their journey and you got to see what it looked like to build a business like this. And we're in a phase of the world of marketing, of social media, where you have the opportunity to do so. And when you do that, you build a really loyal following who is so deeply connected to your mission and your brand and who you are, that they're going to be with you for the long term. There's nothing like that. There's nothing that you can do to replicate that type of connection. So you're going to want to show the journey and the behind the scenes. Okay, fine. I heard you. I know that <laughs> I know that when I have been very active on my stories and the interaction in general has been so good, the overall energy is good. The questions start coming in, the interest starts coming in. And so you're absolutely right on that front as far as stories One of the things that I've told people, and I want you to either challenge me on it or tell me why it's true, is I'm a big believer that you should be on the popular platforms, even as an identity, but you spend your most time in the platforms where your audience is. So for instance, if like my audience for my retreats are probably not on TikTok, I'm on TikTok, but 
my retreat goers, my attendees that are going to pay me money, that's just not the age, the demographic, the generation. They're just not in TikTok. They're primarily in Facebook and then secondary in Instagram. So I'm there, but I spend the bulk of my time where my audience is. What are your thoughts on that? I would agree with that as well. What I would challenge is to think about the people who influence the decision makers and who are your buyers. What I mean by that is if you are targeting an older audience, maybe like high millennials, Gen X, baby boomers, like that type of thing, you know, TikTok audience is actually getting a bit older. So we tend to sometimes think that, oh, TikTok is just for like Gen Z, but it's really not. If you are targeting an audience anywhere between the ages of 18 and 45, TikTok is a viable marketing platform. One of the reasons it is a viable marketing platform is because baby boomers right now, right? Like my parents are baby boomers. They're in their 60s. I have a huge influence on their decision making and I'm in my late 20s. So if you think about who's going to bring things to those people, it may not be like the ads that they're seeing. It may be their children. It may be their nieces and nephews. It may be people that they work with. You know, they may have said, hey, you know, I really would love this idea of doing a yoga retreat. I don't really know where to find them. You know, I'm not seeing anything on Facebook right now. And then they're kid is on TikTok and they find you and then they send that to a parent or an aunt or uncle, right? So we have to think about something a little bit bigger than just the the direct consumption that our target audience is experiencing. And when you do that, it may open up your eyes to other platforms. Now, that's not to say that you should spread yourself so thin where you are on everything because someone could tell someone about you and any experience. However, you know, if you have the bandwidth and you have the capacity to post and to strategically approach multiple platforms and target different age ranges, I would definitely go for that as well. Love it. Hey guys, I'm popping in to ask a quick question. Are you ready to elevate your marketing game and fill those retreat slots faster than ever? Of course you are. That's why you're here. And we've got the toolkit for you. Our top five marketing tools for retreat leaders guide. This isn't just a guide. It's your marketing guru wrapped up in one easy to follow package. Dive into the essentials of social media marketing, where we show you how to leverage those platforms to create a community buzzing with excitement for your retreats. Also, unleash the power of content marketing with strategies that educate and engage your potential guests. Plus, we'll dive into email marketing, SEO, and partnership opportunities that open new doors and bring in streams of attendees. So why wait to make your retreats the talk of the town? Download your free guide today by visiting retreatmarketingtools.com and start transforming your retreat dreams into reality. Okay. Somebody is like, I need your help, Emma. How can you help them and how can they find you? For sure. So as I mentioned, social media marketing is the number one service that we offer here at 95 Media. And what that entails is really bringing us in as your, essentially your marketing department. Our goal is to make marketing easy and fun for you again, so that you get to focus on other aspects of your business, like finding people to bring in and, you know, recording content and running the retreats, doing the thing that only you can do. When we work with brands and founders, we really come in and we take over in order to really optimize and increase your conversions. That includes everything from creating the content, building out your strategy, building your audience engagement and interactions, utilizing data along the way to really inform and optimize what we're doing at every step of the process. So when you hire 95 Media, you're really bringing in a partner for your marketing and allowing yourself to take that step back so that you can focus on those needle moving tasks that only you can do. So we are super active. We are actually on every platform. If you, wherever you are, we are, you can easily find us there. But I would say Instagram is kind of our number one, my favorite. I'm on stories all the time over there. Our handle is 90.5.media. Just spell it all out. Our website is 95media.co. You can find everything between those two platforms. But yeah, we work with a lot of founder-led brands, a lot of businesses who are just ready to scale and ready to start seeing results from their social media marketing. Love it. And I will have all of that in the show notes so you can find everything in the show notes. And I think, Emma, you and I will be having further conversation because this is all such good stuff. So thank you so much for being on the show and sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you so much for having me. This was so fun. I appreciate it. 
Thanks for listening to the Retreat Leaders Podcast. Learn more at www.theretreatranch.com. See you next time.